Moral of the story is don't get old. <laughs> don't get old, kids. Last year we played <laughs> Scott and Nate from Player Court, and we're doing a rematch in March, which is next month. Like every other tennis coach, well, almost every other tennis coach in the world, we hardly ever hit, so we figured if we want to give hit. them a good run for their money, we should probably hit a couple tennis balls. Today is like just uh, preliminary training. It's not really training, but training. Right like at least find hopefully a little bit of timing, yeah. or it's not like we're trying to sharpen some kind of no. pre-existing game. No. <laughs> So uh, a great start is short court. And the reason why, at least I feel like starting short court is nice is because it gives you a rhythm. You don't have to move as much just to, and I'm not talking about like not split stepping. Of course, sometimes I don't split step in the short court, but I meaning that I don't have to run all the way around the baseline. And it's a great way to get a feel. And basically it's a good sign of control. If you can rally short court, you can, you probably have a decent degree of control over what you want to do on the court. I think for me, it's always been like a good audit of like how, it's like the first sign of uh, timing and uh, stroke comfort. And like, how's my body feeling? And so for training purposes, uh, I feel like it can really inform me as far as like, what do I want to spend my time on today? If we were playing a match, then it'd be very much like, okay, like what, what tools do I have and not have today? Nice start on the, on the ball fuzz though. That's how you know you've got a relatively good quality rally going. When a ball goes from looking like this to looking like that. So Kevin and I, and I will start off at like 50-ish percent and just get comfortable. It's just kind of a continuation of the short court mindset or mentality. Neither of us want to pressure the other person at all here. It's kind of initial timing and, and comfort. Overall, same thing from the baseline. I really start finding my rhythm. Um, I pick one, two things I really want to focus on. Like right now, staying really relaxed in my hands, really setting up nice and early. From here, Kevin and I will slowly kind of uh, ramp up the intensity level a little bit until probably get to like a seven out of 10 in intensity or so. Like still controlled, but a little bit more real life. We've been hitting for about 10 minutes yeah. or so. We just hit our first like intense feeling shots like 30, 45 seconds ago. I think that's the biggest mistake players probably make is they ramp up really fast very early because they want to like feel good. They want to hit those sweet feeling shots. Sweet feeling shots. And it's hard to have the discipline to start off with the short court and then slow middle and then slowly yeah. ramp. The key to a good partnership with tennis training is just finding kind of the common ground. Like Kevin and I both shared like what our top priorities were and we find some kind of drill that as much as possible creates overlap with those, those uh, elements that, that we have in common. So here we're working on our footwork, our movement, our timing, our, our placement kind of all at the same time. But it also, it isolates one person as being the facilitator. And that way we don't have double dynamic like movement. Cause that probably wouldn't be as high quality for Kevin and, and I right now, since we haven't been hitting a whole lot. Practice, this is the lab. Some things are a little frustrating, but it's like, um, just go back and tinker a little bit. You know, this is the lab, this is the time to tinker. And so while some of it is like, ah, oh, I really wanna make that ball. It's like, okay, so what could it be? We have to go back and review the video on some of these things to make sure they're right. That'd be interesting now seeing like- Watch yourself. Yeah, right? with video yeah. and see like, okay, yeah, you're totally off beat. Yeah. Something um, totally different. Yeah, though. yeah. I think it's really important when you're doing returns to find a focus. And one of the biggest focuses is where you're gonna hit it. So many times we get locked into like, oh, I just get it back. Um, challenge yourself to try to hit targets. So like we went through this drill and my serve wide on my forehand, I try to do uh, cross court, down the line, and down the middle. Uh, I think it's really important, but you find a lot of times where certain shots might be a little bit more difficult. Moral of the story is don't get old. Don't get old, kids. <laughs>
Uh, yeah, good, good hitting today. Yeah. I felt like it was really productive. Like, of course, me, like my big picture goal is really kind of just like mental in my relationship with myself. And I feel good that I can hit bad shots and, and be more okay with it. And uh, so I felt like today was really productive. I didn't hit everything the way I wanted huh. to, but yeah. of course, like how could I possibly expect to, to feel great when we're not out here? Very, very often, or hardly at all. No. So, uh, so yeah. Thanks. It's good. Yeah, it's good it was practice. good. For me, it's just getting a feel for the ball. That's why I was like, whatever you want to do, yeah. I just want to get a feel for what's going on with like my game, which I haven't been in touch with for quite a while. So we had uh, some personal, intimate time, in alone touch. time, date night, date night with my tennis <laughs> game. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's a great way to end it. Yeah. <laughs>